Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about the tale of two lies, and that's going to be the overarching theme for the video. And as you can see on the title page, we have the S&P breaking the trend line that we had set up on it since last week and VIX kind of having a rough day. So two indexes telling us a very interesting story and we're basically also gonna be going over Powell's speech, but I first wanna recap what happened on the day. So the S&P is now below the trend line that we had going back all the way since the beginning of May or basically mid of May. We did see basically some red volume today, but I do have some concerns and reservations. And that's why I think one of these two indexes is lying and one of them is telling the truth. And I want you guys to put in the comment section which one you think is lying, which one do you think is telling the truth. And you may be shocked by my opinion on it, but you're gonna have to stay tuned to the end to hear which index I think is basically giving a false signal. So the S&P has broken its trend line. So it has stopped going up. It's now no longer going sideways and we are going down. We have established a downtrend breaking the previous uptrend. However, we do have this basic other trend line that we can draw here that extends back down closer to the 50 day moving average. And that could be an area that the S&P could in the near or relatively near to future come back to. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be come crashing back down. You got a lot to go to break the previous week's range. You have an additional 1.4% work to go. And to basically break the high and recover, you have 1.91%. Now, some of the things that are going on in the S&P is you now have basically a gap above here and you basically have a gap below. So two gaps, one is closer than the next, but the S&P did fill the gap that it basically formed on the day, came up, had the big solve from the beginning of the day, came back, tried to recover, and then afterward basically just fell down the cliff the rest of the day. Volume is not pretty stellar. You do have a decreasing basic volume compared to the previous push. You had a massive volume ramp on the way up. And now you kind of just stagnate on the way down. You're not really seeing the bulls come back to defend these areas, but you're not also seeing the bears just piling in. So where is the excitement in the market? And I'm wondering if this is setting up to be a trap for either team. And it's really going to determine based on which team steps up to the plate first. Now, as of the recording of this video, we are above 345, which is a key level. So the bulls did defend, but we also rejected off our previous basically top here at 437.44. And now we're basically going lower based on the chart. However, we had Powell speaking today and Powell gave us some interesting commentary at that. We're gonna dive into that now. So, you know, Powell giving a standard thing of the committee uh, to bring inflation back down to 2% goal and we're committed to that, blah, 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 blah. You know, the standard spiel that he gives. Uh, one of the highlights that I would say from his conference, and he actually testified today for basically two and a half hours. So this was a long winded speech. This was a lot of questions and I wouldn't say he slipped up on anything. He kind of just gave you similar message to what he gave you on the press conference, just drilling down on certain points. One of them is we're seeing some effects of monetary tightening, but we'll take time for the full effects of monetary restraint to be realized and especially on inflation. So he's basically kind of just echoing the higher for a longer message. Nearly all FOMC member participants expect it will be appropriate to raise interest rates somewhat further by year end. And this is if you guys watch the press conference or watch our coverage of Powell's speech where he said, and that's why we decided to skip the, this meeting. Oh, I, I really shouldn't call it a skip. It's out in the open now, Powell. So he basically had to come out and own it, which he did. He basically said, look, more rate hikes ahead. This is a skip. This is not a pause. Market didn't necessarily take that too well. However, they were selling off prior to Powell coming out. Futures were selling off. They were green at the beginning of the day, but basically sold off into the red as we were going to the 930 open. And kind of also chiming in several times about tightening credit conditions are likely to weigh on economic activity. Well, any economist with a basic understanding could tell you that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that, that when you crush the ability to get money, it makes it harder to come by. So therefore you're not spending as crazy. 
Next, you also went into interest rate pause is expected to be temporary. If it's a pause, it's not really temporary. That's more of a skip, but everyone wants to keep calling it a pause. And now he actually went into talking about really re trying to separate the two, the speed of rate hikes and basically the longevity of them. So the level for rate hikes and the speed of rate hikes are separate. So he's trying to separate those two because a lot of people are basically just tying those together. And in Powell's mind, they're not mutually basically connected to one another. They're mutually exclusive. So he's trying to get that into everyone's mind that it basically, it makes sense to move rates higher at a more moderate pace, trying to just beat that message in of, hey, we're going to keep raising, but it's just not going to be as aggressive. We don't have to be as aggressive, which in hindsight, he's actually looking at the past of what Volcker did, what happened when they basically start jacking rates up when they're nearing the target and they're not slowing down. They start to break things. Now, I am in the camp that they're still going to break something, but he's basically attempting to trying not to. I think he knows it's futile, but he again, this is a fetch chair. He has to put on the Goldilocks scenario. If he came out tomorrow and said, yeah, we're going to basically crash the economy, the indexes would lock, lock limit almost instantly. So again, he can't just come out and say stuff like that. He also then went into talking about the expectation that the ratio of job openings to unemployed people will come down. That's a way for a labor market to become less tight without having unemployment rise. So he's trying to thread that needle right now of basically having less job openings, but keeping people employed, which you really, in my opinion, can't have either one. Either you have a very growing economy or you basically have a shrinking. There's no real middle ground. And I don't think history has actually shown exhibits of that middle ground existing for a long time. It may be a transition period between the two, but it's never been an area where you just don't have growth, but you still have the same employment because usually companies are hiring when they're growing, when they're able to sustain those jobs. Usually when you have a job freeze or hiring freeze, it's because you're struggling and therefore because you're struggling you need to cut back on labor. Naturally that's how it works. You get temporary freezes but not in the whole market. You have individual sectors that may do it and then come back and come freeze again and go through the cyclical nature but really you don't have entire markets doing it. And then he reiterates still significant labor shortages. So again the jobs market is not coming into balance. And then he's talking about housing supply and demand are getting back into line. Housing inflation is set to come down. Keyword set to. He's also talked multiple times how economists are predicting things that never happen. So maybe he should take his own advice, especially looking at the housing numbers that just came out yesterday. And it was absolutely insane that the, the amount of housing starts are growing. So now are we really going to get a reprieve in the housing market? And it's not really showing signs of weakness from what I'm seeing. If you guys are seeing something different, throw it down in the comment section below and give a share with us your opinion. And if you guys wouldn't mind, like the video, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Or if you're finding this not so enjoyable, throw it down in the comment section of what we could improve or what you would like to see more of if you are enjoying the video. We always look for your feedback. And this statement here really, really um, threw me for a loop. And I would like to ever know everyone else's opinion. There's a lot of uncertainty over the lags for monetary policy. Markets don't like uncertainty. They either like yes or no answers. Are you going to keep raising? You're not going to keep raising. This walking and straddling the line is actually the worst thing for the market because they don't know what to make of it and create so much volatility in it. And it's just a basic bloodbath for the market. And we have to see what other things he brought up in the conference. Looking at some of his final comments, uh, we should focus heavily on inflation as we are far from the goal. And that should pretty much sum up his entire monetary policy and monetary stance that he's basically saying we have more to do. We're going to keep raising rates. This idea of a pause in everyone's mind, it's not a pause, it's a skip. A skip indicates that future rate hikes are coming. And again, the market has not priced in the second right hike. They're only pricing in one. And the bond market is starting, keyword starting, to show that pricing in now, which usually follows by the market. But again, 
It's the crazy buy the dip mentality of the market. And let's see how long that actually can last. And which is a perfect segue into the fear and greed index. But before we get to the fear and greed index, I did want to also share this one last statement. We never used the word pause and I wouldn't use that here today. So basically pal, putting the stake in the ground that it's not a pause. However, if we jump over the fear and greed index, you can see that it just did not want to relent. So our previous close was 79. We basically stayed at 79, even though the market basically showed weakness and we didn't really tick back into any form of greed or even neutral, we just barely moved the needle. And as you can see here, the price strength and Brett still stay strong. We have put to call ratios kind of pricing in some protection and VIX basically staying neutral, but all these other safe haven demand and junk bond demand, actually what drove the market down is junk bond demand. So people are basically going towards the bond market, which could have something to do with basically Fed's balance sheet runoff, which Powell did cover. He did dabble on the balance sheet, basically saying balance sheet would be smaller than now, but need a buffer so that we don't bump against scarce reserves. And what he's referring to is basically the reverse repo and the Fed balance sheet, where he's letting assets run off their balance sheet. They're not repurchasing them. And they're now starting to use the reverse repo, which for all those that don't know what the reverse repo is, it means reverse repurchase agreement. So repossess basically. So banks part cash at this facility in exchange for collateral. It was created in 2019 when we had the internal lending banks problems that basically the overnight lending between banks skyrocketed because no one trusted anyone else. So Fed created this as basically a liquidity buffer. Now with the treasury basically buying yields and buying bonds, they're using the runoff of that facility to push basically liquidity to the market. So it allows the treasury to keep buying along with basically the Fed running their balance sheet off, continuing to run their balance sheet off. And we're just basically going to have to see how that all plays out in the coming months. And then Powell basically wrapped up with, I don't know how much reverse repo will shrink. And basically he's talking about the reverse repo facility to saying, I don't know how much Lakoi is going to come out of there, but there's over $2 trillion sitting there. So even if we got a 50% decrease, that still leaves a trillion dollar lever for the Federal Reserve to pull. And all they would have to do is lower the interest that they're paying on that. So now for all those that stay towards the end of the video, you guys can finally hear which opinion of mine I'm leaning towards. Is VIX or is the SPY giving a sign that we're basically going higher or lower? So let's look at the factual matter. The S&P really didn't tick much of the fear and greed index. You saw VIX coming back down to this trend line, which is an area of support it previously bounced off of. As you can see here recently, came down to this trend line, consolidated bounce, but really didn't have a meaningful bounce. And we're coming back down into basically the 13 level. Right now we're at 13.2 and we could head lower. However, you do have signs that the S&P broke a trend line. So People are breaking trend line, but VIX is coming down lower. So there's a significant complacency in the market. And like I said in yesterday's video, that VIX coming down and the Russell is going to be your biggest indicators of what's going to happen. And let's jump over to Russell to give us what is happening. I said if the Russell closes below this level of $183.76, that would be a blood battle. Today, we made a lower low and a higher high both, and we didn't defend either. So basically those areas just doji candle on the day inside bar. So we're forming consolidation, but we're forming sideways consolidation here, meaning we have the ability to now consolidate and rip up. I do think that the Russell in the next day or two has to give it away. I think the Russell and on I'm going to be watching is the Russell to indicate which sign are we going. The Russell was the strongest of the indexes today along with the Dow. And that's not a sign of weakness in the indexes. It's just more of a rotation. People rotating out of tech, rotating out of spy into the Russell, into the Dow. 
which means that I believe the S&P is lying. I think this trend line break here is a trap for the bears. I think they're gonna see what they want on the chart. They're not supporting it by volume because the volume is pretty abysmal and the VIX coming down is telling the truth. The VIX coming down is basically saying, yeah, I'm gonna come down to this trend line and hold in this area. I think the S&P is lying to us, basically saying that, hey, we broke a trend line, we're going down lower. I don't believe it for one reason. The Russell is not showing the weakness that it would, meaning small caps are leading. This could be a pause for the bigger cap stocks like the NASDAQ and SP, which are more big cap sensitive, especially the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ basically came down lower, coming back down to this previous candle top here at the 360 level, and we bounced around there. So we could easily get tomorrow rotation on the upside. And I did basically say that Powell usually sends the market down one day and up the next. So we got the down day. Does Powell give us the bullish tomorrow? And there was a lot of people saying that his speech today was dovish. So does he continue that quote unquote dovish speech? Or does he kind of give a more rosy picture or not really dive into monetary policy? And the bulls just take another whiff of that hopium and just basically keep running it up because we've known that it's basically the buy the dip mentality of the market and if we just dive in quickly to recap what happened on the intraday on the s p you did see we had the big sell-off pushed up towards the end of the day and then it got slammed back down but again the volume has been predominantly weak however you do have a intraday head and shoulders on the s p but then again this head and shoulders basically needs to get broken with volume and we need to see a volume ramp we really need to see that volume ramp if we're going to get the downside i don't believe it just because i'm not seeing the weakness in the russell now fair disclosure that if the russell shows that weakness tomorrow we're going in we're going to open with a bloody close or sorry bloody open then i'll basically be saying i'd be looking at more downside potential but i want to see the russell lead that potential we did see today that carry continue selling off basically invalidating this bull flag or flat pattern that we had on the daily probably coming down to the 50 but now guys we're so close to that 50 do we see a bounce deck cap bounce off here and push higher or do we basically come down through the 50 so these are things i'm going to be watching tomorrow i'm going to be watching carry like a hawk i'm going to be watching iwm as a hawk and basically seeing what these indexes are doing i'm not really going to be paying attention to the s p or the tech sector just because they're not going to give the move away prior to them i think you're going to see the iwm and the or the russell 2000 you show it along with KRE. that's where i'm going to be looking for the regional banks you could get a sideways day if you get a doji day i do think that's the reverse signal to the upside and i'd be playing the upside on the market just because the volume has been pretty abysmal here and that's why I'm not saying the players have the conviction. They won the battle today, but they're not necessarily winning the war. And you guys know I'm more bear skewed in this market just because of looking at the fundamentals. But the charts are basically telling me that this is more of a rotation. You have VIX that's basically telling you, hey, I'm coming down here, but I want to see that hard bounce. I want to see what VIX does, and Russell does, and carry. Those are my three things I'm going to be watching for today. And as always, Tomorrow, we're going to basically be doing the viewer requested ticker. So you guys can tune in to get my opinion or update of which scenario basically played out and along with going over the tickers you guys requested. So throw them down in the comment section below of which ticker you want requested. And I'll make sure to add it to the list for tomorrow. And I all hope to see you here tomorrow for viewer requested ticker Fridays. If not, consider subscribing to the channel for the weekend deep dive that's coming out on saturday we do every single week and you guys have been liking that video where we just kind of sectioned it off for you and you get to choose and hear our own thoughts at the end of the week along with the game plan for the next training week so with that i thank you very much for watching and hope you have a wonderful day